You are now entering Armbar Audio. What is up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to another episode of Armbar Audio. It's another super special episode with another awesome guest. Uh, first of all, going to introduce my man Tim Farley down here. Uh, what's up, everybody? Hope everyone's doing well. Uh, it is the eve of final battle, and we will be talking to none other than Josh the Goods Woods. Yeah, it's me. <laughs> what's up, guys? Thanks. How's it going, man? I know, I know. <clears throat> hey, I'm doing great. How are you guys doing? Where are you guys at? We're in Pittsburgh. Yeah. It's so cold there. It yeah, so that's cold. why so that's why we were saying that the weather kept yeah, us apart. That's actually the the reason that we're separate right now. Usually it'd be us in one box and you in another box. But now Yeah, we have usually three my <laughs> arm is connected to his arm, but the snow somehow broke apart. Yeah, it broke us off. Yeah. It was crazy. You guys you guys have like, you guys got like a 5x shirt and then you kind of sign these twins it and put your head through the the hole yeah and just be yeah, one person we have to take turns on who jerks who jerks off and what wait stop don't wait what wait no, what kind of what kind of everything no. <laughs> what did i sign up for ah! uh, <laughs> but anyway uh like we said eve of final battle big ring of honor show coming um josh woods one of the people that me and Tim agree ROH should be building around. Uh, Josh, what can we expect from Final Battle? Uh, I mean, Final Battle always produces. You know, uh, if you're if you're a Ring of Honor fan, you follow you know, what we do. I don't think Final Battle ever disappoints, and uh, at least in my opinion, I don't think this one will either. And uh, I just I'm just looking forward to watching it myself and and just sitting back and enjoying, you know, what everyone's doing and where we're going. I mean, I love Ring of Honor. It's great. It's, yeah, uh, really. I mean, it's okay, right? Like, there's really nothing else like what we're doing on the planet right now. And it's like true, true. Love it. I agree, man. Like, honestly, I kind of fell out of ROH for a little while. But whenever it came back, I was like, I'm going to give it another chance. And the production, like, everything about the presentation of the show has been fantastic. The pure championship uh uh tournament was a great way to come back um you did extremely well in that last night i watched you and flip gordon flips getting the pure championship match at final battle you may possibly be wrestling twice uh at final battle uh your first match is against tony deppin dak draper drapper something lsg uh wh what do you think about going into this match and possibly wrestling two matches uh i'm not a stranger to wrestling multiple times throughout the day you know in college you know we um, i think i most i've ever wrestled in one day is like eight matches and like, that's that's not fun it's a lot of work um these are like all really good guys you know like they wouldn't be a part of this match if they weren't good or something to to kind of worry myself about but you know just like any any other thing, man, you just got to roll with it and just, you know, outperform everybody else. Sounds good to me. So that takes me to Ryu Lee. So you get, you're going to beat Ryu Lee on Final Battle 2? Dragon Lee? Yeah. Uh, if, I, if I face him, hell yeah. Oh, <laughs> if <laughs> you got to beat these dudes. You got to beat these dudes. I have to. There's no other chance. Have to. Yeah. <laughs> no try, just succeed. Right. Uh, so, talking a little bit about Ring of Honor, um, I, I mentioned to you earlier my granddad is a huge Ring of Honor guy. He's uh, like the only, he's the only guy that'll go to Ring of Honor with me. Uh, Tim would if it was happening, but uh, my granddad always goes with me. So, he loves Silas Young. You, of course, were partnered with Silas Young for a while. I don't know if you still are or not, but um, what's uh, what, what's it like working with Silas? Uh, well, I'm still partnered with Silas. He's just right. been been doing a lot of man stuff, you know. He's been forging knives. 
climb, <laughs> climbing mountains and, and uh, you know, hunting bears with his hands. So uh, looking forward to him coming back. He just said, hey, man, I'm not coming back until you make me proud of you. So, you know, I've just been under a lot of stress, a lot of pressure. Um, Silas the red is, man. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> like, like just, just swallowing the dip spit, like not even spitting it out is a psychopath. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's great, man. You know, Silas is, uh, he's, you know, under all like the rough, you know, um, exterior, he's like a great mentor. And, and uh, you know, when we do talk, <laughs> uh, we, we, you know, he's been really great just for my like, mental clarity and, uh, just he's just, just a great guy to learn from, and I'm kind of privileged to be in that position to to be under that wing, so to speak. But uh, you know, as of late, I feel like I've kind of just flourished a little bit on my own. Yeah, and yeah, uh, totally. and, yeah. and like of course, you know, it's great to kind of just be your own person and <laughs> and uh, kind of get like the shining that you want, right? But you know, I miss Silas. I miss what we're doing. I love it, and uh, you know, I'll always want the best. Like I always want to be. The, the top of everything. So whether it's the pure champion or the tag champ, world champ, uh, TV champ, that's always on my mind. But um, I think getting the tag titles of Stylus and like and the pure are like right neck and neck. Like I want them both. Maybe at the same time, but that'd be so cool. But you know, like I'm not I'm not against one or the other or leaning one way or the other. Yeah, yeah. I really I really liked your pure your pure rules match against Jay Lethal. It was. I was really just funny. about to say, Jay's a that- pro, man. I- He's a legend, dude. That promo, like, uh, when he said, uh, get that smile off your face, you think this is funny, and you just smiled back and was doing the doing the MMA thing mm-hmm. and said, no, I don't <laughs> think this is funny. I, you're Jay Lethal. I think this is sad. I was like, oh, <laughs> shit. Total Mark Out I mean, moment. <laughs> yeah, I mean, hey, sometimes the truth hurts, you know. Uh, you just uh, – I. You put you put a guy like Jay Lethal on the biggest pedestal, man. He's, he's he really is in every essence of the word a legend. Uh, I'm arguably like one of the best wrestlers in the world, and uh, you know you kind of you, know, you got to give someone their respect, right? No matter no matter what level you're at, and, and you know who, because you, you know it's, it's it's a combat sport. Uh, yeah, man. So I was, expect, I was expecting just a little bit more, but uh, we definitely we definitely fought it out, man. I love that's probably one of my favorite matches. So yeah, I like. It. Speaking of um, favorite matches and such, since you've been with Ring of Honor, uh, you participated in, like, one War of the Worlds, I believe, and um, you didn't wrestle any of the New Japan guys, I don't think, uh, from my research. Um, When the world returns to normal, do you have your eyes set on any of the New Japan guys? Uh, you know, going. I think going to Japan in general is kind of like my dream. I would love. I would love to go there. I mean, I'll, I just want to go there and busy. You know, like hell yeah. But uh, I think going there and competing is definitely um, right up there in like my top aspirations list. Uh, you guys ever been? You guys ever been to Japan? Uh, uh, in my dreams. A total, <laughs> total bucket list thing for me. One hundred. Right. Yeah, we all go together. That'd be so fun. I love it to do that. <laughs> of I, course. I, yeah, man. Like, I don't, I don't have like an individual site. Um, I think, uh, I, I just think just you know being there and and having that opportunity it just speaks for itself. And you know, I, I, I'm just a big believer in no matter what opportunity you're given, make the most of it. Um, you know, I think God is great. I think Silas and I would do really well against them. That's a really cool Styles clash, as like cliche as that is to say. Yeah, that'd be but, a good match though. Yeah, I think that'd be great. Man, you got like those guys are phenomenal. And uh, just like I kind of watched them as I was going into the business, and and it's like oh, I want to fight them. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> wow. watching watching your matches and your style, like really hard hitting style, I think you mixing it up with Minoru Suzuki would be pretty epic. So oh, you he took the words out of my mouth. <laughs> like Jesus. he ain't ready. He ain't ready for it. But no, like oh, I I watched them a lot. Like when I was in NXT, trying to kind of like figure out like where it was at and like what kind of things. Um, like how I wanted to present like myself and my brand, and uh, I watched a lot of his stuff, and uh, that, that I think that would probably be, like my like, top two or three opponents I would ever want to face. Uh, that would that would be phenomenal. Yeah, uh, man. Um, Who else is up there? <laughs> uh, Undertaker. 
Undertaker. <laughs> Everybody's dream opponent should be Undertaker. Right? Right? Like, when I, was, when I, was in the, I was in the PC. He came in, and he was uh, when Bill DeMont was coaching, he was kind of working with our class because we were, like, a really beginner class. And uh, he, like, looks at me and goes, hey, shooter, come work my leg. And I was like, uh, all right, man. I was like, okay. <laughs> I, got to, I got to, like, touch his leg for, like, a couple minutes, so that was pretty cool. Uh <laughs> I, 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 Billy Gunn too, man. Billy Gunn's like been one of my coaches, and I like, kind of one of like my really uh, huge influences, just as far as just in ring ability. And I would just love to have any sort of match with Billy, or just to like, kind of be standing next to him in a ring would be really cool. Yeah, that Billy Gunn sick. seems like one of those guys. Like he's real, like for the future of the business, especially uh, seeing what he's doing, like with AEW, where and his son, he's really kind of taking the back seat. To push his sons forward, you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean Billy, Billy like you know, he's a he's phenomenal man, and and I, I yeah, just that that's opportunity is great, and he's like one, of, he's like already like done so much, he's still doing like a lot, and I, and I think uh, you know what he's doing with his sons is great, and like they're all they're all just like a bunch of children, man. It's so fun to be in the ring with them, and and uh, just kind of watch them all interact because you're like, man, I want to be a part of that. Um, you know, it's like I want to have fun too. Like, Billy's so big; he's such a man. He's like he's yeah. like six eight, almost like three hundred pounds. And it's just like, all right, man, did let's you, do this. You know, like, did, did all right. You see, <laughs> did you see the recent video of him at some bodybuilding competition? Yeah. Did he you had, see that? Um, yeah, he just did a a, a bodybuilding <laughs> show. Yeah, that was like really cool to watch because like I've seen him, I've seen him like you know in his like man like, size and all yeah, that. like dude yeah, is insane cool. ripped. <laughs> yeah he works hard he definitely is one of those guys that's always working hard and always trying to like just stay with him be be great and i feel like a lot of people get to like a certain level and they're like ah, you know i made it i'm cool and content and like that's never at least from my experience of billy that's never been billy yeah. um he been he's always been like one of the ones to always like want to train and stuff so it's cool i got to train with him and austin and colton and uh a couple of those other guys like sean spears and uh, breeze this past week and it was just really fun to kind of just just to even be in the ring with those guys and learn from like such experienced people and it's just it's awesome really awesome that's awesome dude so so um, you you spoke about um your a little you kind of veered into your nxt stint how would you compare and contrast your nxt time with ring of honor that's a good one, dude. That's a real good one. Uh, I mean, it's it's so different. It would be, I think, it would be a little different if I had come from like a world of experience because, like, I went straight from college uh, wrestling right in NXT. So I didn't really get that that first world experience from like doing indies or or like really knowing what I was doing at all. And personally, for me, I loved being at the PC. Like, I really like the regimented schedule. I I love learning. Uh, I, I train like three, four times a week. Man, I just love being in the ring, and that was like, so awesome. To, to just have all those guys in there and like learning from like uh who was like I'm trying to think um like Gable was still in NXT when I was there Jason Jordan Corbin Breeze uh, Ty like just being able to learn from all those guys and Finn Balor it was it was it was phenomenal man like I would love to be there oh I mean I, I love being a ring of honor don't get me wrong but like, you know Shawn Michaels is there right that's oh Shawn oh my right. god <laughs> 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 that would be really cool uh, I, I think. That kind of being there set me up for Ring of Honor, because I kind of learned how to actually work and and uh, and be good-ish in the ring, and then you know really developing and growing in, in Ring of Honor. Uh, there's it's it's very hands off in Ring of Honor. They're like, hey, like this is the body of work you're presenting, so let's see how it goes. And uh, a lot of people like that. They like the the ability to kind of do what they want. Where I think like an NXT, they're kind of more like, hey, this is what we want you to do. Go ahead. I think uh, from just from what I've heard, not yeah. from my experience, but a lot of people don't get uh, the creative freedom. But in Ring of Honor, we get a lot of creative freedom, and I think that kind of keeps us so different from everybody else because, like, we can just present a body of work, and you know, if it works, it works. If not, hey, it's back to the drawing board, fixing uh, what's wrong. And it's really cool, man. NXT got a lot of guys that come in. You know, they're they're like worried about their jobs, and it's very different. Uh, in Ring of Honor, you know, like, a lot of guys are like, willing to help everyone. I'm not saying that's not like that in NXT. Like there are a lot of guys that helped me, and, like, and and um, and and you know, mentored me and stuff. But when you when you go in there, it's it's very it's very stressful because you know you got 
you know, if, if I'm, if I'm an MMA guy and then like, uh, another MMA guy comes in, it's like, Oh, what the fuck? <laughs> right? like, uh, yeah, but I, I just like, there's not really that, that kind of pressure, like for, for, for ring of honor. We have our locker room is so tight and, uh, I think everyone really gets along and like, I, I loved it. Speaking <laughs> of MMA guys, uh, I saw that you run camps for a lot of people, and one of the names that I came across was uh, another fellow wrestler from the MMA world, T Filthy Tom Lawler. Uh, how how is that? Like, uh, what's your relationship? Uh, Tom Tom is great. So uh, so Tom wrestled at UCF. This my alum my alma mater is that the right word yeah uh so i kind of had that relationship just just from the just from us both being at the same wrestling school not at the same time uh, he was a three-time national champ i was only a one-timer but uh <laughs> <then> <laughs> right oh sadness but he was he was in uh the ufc at the time and and uh i kind of reached out to him for some advice like hey man you know what's some stuff i can do in the off season so i can stay successful and then he links me up with seth petrozelli that's kind of how I transitioned into like that whole world, and uh, you know Tom would come down to work with Seth, and I would be able, I would get to work with him. Uh, my my, I mean, I really hate how people refer to like like collegiate and like Olympic style wrestling as amateur. I just don't like right. it. I don't know. It's, like when I like, and so my wrestling is really good. Like as like humbly as you can say that, right? Like, you know, like uh, well, I'm not shitty, but uh, I mean there are people way better than me, and it was just really cool to be able to like like learn from Tom and just like kind of help him like as he had fights and just be a part of that. So like Tom is a great guy and uh, we've never been able to like actually work, work like, you know, pro wrestling style. I think that, that'd be kind of fun. I think some people might be bored because, you know, we're like, we're both really technical guys and some people, like, there's some stuff that people do and you're like, well, I don't know what just happened, but you know, that's just because people are so used to. But this the is the perfect time for that to happen because there's no yeah. crowd. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you never know what could happen but uh yeah so i i, I would personally just enjoy that just because like tom and i have some sort of friendship um i can't say like oh i could call tom right now we could talk for an hour but you know he's pretty, he's pretty responsive if i like, have a question or whatever he's always been a great guy to me i have no complaints about him i think it's cool if you ever wrestle him i know exactly where it should be and uh it's a place where you should have gotten a call for the past three years Josh Barnett's blood sport. Why have I not seen you on Josh Barnett's blood sport? <laughs> I mean, I don't know. Ask Josh Barnett. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> right? Like, I don't, I don't know, man. Might I, have to. <laughs> I, I was supposed to do the, the one in Tampa, but, you know, COVID, so I, I obviously couldn't do that. And um, he had another one, and I just, I don't, I don't know, maybe he doesn't think I'm good. Maybe he just has other ideas. I mean, hey, man, not everyone likes what I do. Some people do, some people don't. I'm not mad at it, but I, that would I, definitely I think you'd be perfect for it. Agreed. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah. I'm a Josh Barnett fan. <laughs> yeah, I was a fan of uh, Josh Barnett, especially whenever he, he broke, like, the entire show's rules and was going to beat the shit out of Jay White on JR's behalf. That was pretty cool. Yeah, well, sometimes you got to do badass yeah, stuff. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I think anybody that, like, hates Jay White fell in love with Josh Barnett that day. <laughs> but, yeah, man. Um, so, talking about NXT, talking about Ring of Honor, is there any other promotion that you'd want to work for? Uh, PWG, I think, would be a pretty cool one. Uh, obviously, like anything in Japan, man. I'm not. I'm not picky at all. I. I, I think that would be great. Um, there are like there's. Uh, can I say that? Uh, there are some guys in AEW I wouldn't mind working. Like I'm not. I don't want to leave Ring of Honor. I love Ring of Honor. Right. Uh, there's just there's a lot of there's a lot of talent and and you know under whatever banner that happens that there are a lot of guys I would love to wrestle. And uh, yeah, man. It seems know, like, like you. Yeah. It seems like that would be able to happen on, like, an AEW Dark, possibly, because they don't seem to really, like, uh, try to get try to get everyone on there to leave their home company, you know what I mean? 
Yeah, I mean, I'm sure there's, I'm sure there's some sort of conflicts with, uh, you know, ROH and AEW being conflicting companies. I don't know. Yeah, that's like that's way above my pay grade. On like, hey man, can I do that? Like, ah, I don't know. Like, it's got to be beneficial to everybody. So that's like the business side that I'm not privy to. Uh, right. Of course, like I, I've always been a, kind of like a big fan of intermingling companies. I think that's great. Uh, you know, it's kind of cool that Impact and AEW are kind of doing it, but they're not really doing it because. Um, you know, the Good Brothers and Kenny Omega, they already have, like, a relationship. And that'd be different with, like, Kenny Omega and, like, Sammy. Like, that's yeah. something really cool, you know. That's, like, something very different. And and uh, I just think intermingling talent is kind of cool. And you know, people can set their egos aside and, and stuff like that. That's, like, a great thing for the fans, you know. Like, it doesn't matter what company you're with, but you know, people would want to watch it no matter, no matter what. I agree. I agree. And the numbers don't lie either. Last week's no. AEW did better than this week's Raw. And uh, I think Impact had its biggest viewership since, like, they yeah, were dude, on. Yeah, dude, that, uh, that, that first episode where Kenny appeared, um, the Twitch viewers were double the highest they'd ever been. <clears throat> yeah, so, man, yeah. like, this is, like, like wrestling is, is evolving, you know, as, as, uh, as dopey and, and uh, cliche as that sounding. Like, anyone who's a fan of, of, of wrestling is watching, and they're, like, you can see the sport evolving, and uh, you know either, either you got to kind of keep up or you get lost in the shuffle, and I think it's great. Yeah. Right. So talking about PWG, uh, there's an indie promotion making waves that some fans kind of refer to as the spiritual successor to PWG. Uh, would you ever consider working GCW? I mean, I'm I'm pretty much willing to work anywhere. I uh, I just think it, like the, as much experience as you can get is valuable. Uh, working in front of five people or you know five thousand, there's always something to be to be said and learned from from each side of the coin. And uh, there's there's no one I would like really scoff at that I can think of. I think just kind of bettering yourself really is what it's all about, and people um, should just want to be better and. You know, I'm always down to fight, man. I'm DTF, baby. You know, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, man. Um, so what got you away from uh, wrestling, wrestling, and got you into pro wrestling? So. Like, how, uh, how did that transition happen? So I have, um, I finished in 2014, I finished my senior season of wrestling at UCF and uh, I was kind of getting back in MMA. Uh, I took like a little bit of time off just to finish like my college season and worry about that. And uh, one of my friends, Alex Chamberlain, who is a mutual friend of, of uh, my buddy Luke and myself, he was, hey man, reach out to Alex and train with him a little bit, you know, you know amateur guys, you could show him some stuff. And I was like, all right, cool. Yeah, no problem. And uh, so I met up with them, and I, at this point, I really had no aspirations to get into pro wrestling. I hadn't, it hadn't really been in the back of my mind or even on the radar at all, because I, I wanted to fight. Uh, I've been, I've been training a lot, and and I was on the U.S. team in 2012, and then in 2014, there was going to be like another tryout to fight in London. And I was like, yo, I want to do that. That sounds awesome. So I ended up training with Alex. He's like, hey, you should, you should reach out to WWE. I was like, for what? <laughs> and then like, I ended up. Reaching- <laughs> Cause, you know, you never, you never really know. I mean, you never like really like. Oh yeah, like they'll definitely like respond, or, or they probably get bombarded with emails. They're not gonna get this. So I ended up just reaching out, and uh, I sent them a list of my accolades, and they're like, uh, "You want to try out?" It's like, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> I, <laughs> so you know, I ended up, I ended up uh, doing that, and uh, the trial was hard. It was not easy. I think a, a lot of people think they're going to come in and they're going to just, you know, put on a match, get critiqued and be done. But, dude, they, at least from, from, my, from when I was there, I don't know how it is now. That was a long time ago. It was brutal. There was so much cardio. I've seen, ah, oh, man, I, I haven't been worked like that since, like, college, man. But luckily for me, I came right from wrestling in college. I was still in really good shape. And it was it was almost too easy. I don't want to, like, say, oh, I'm the fucking greatest. It was, <laughs> <laughs> but, like, it was hard. It was so difficult. And like dudes were throwing up, and people were just like almost dying. I was like, "Oh my god!" Yeah, like, it's a huge. It's hard. It's so <laughs> hard. And then uh, Bill Demont was the head coach at the time, and I was like, "Hey, Bill," you know, because you know Bill's cool, man. He likes to kind of give people a hard time, and like for me, 
I'm, I'm kind of a goofball, man. You know, I'm a smart ass. So like, I had built like this small rapport with Bill. And I was like, hey, man, you know, like, this seems really fun. I would love to get into this. I live in Orlando. You know, this is where and then NXT is, is there. Uh, right, it's right down the street from me because it's like about 10, 10 miles from UCF. And I was like, you know, like, I want to fight, but like, I really want to try and get into this. And he was like, well, maybe you shouldn't fight anymore. And I was like, why not? Right. We need to see this Josh Woods on TV, all right? <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm, you can keep talking, but I just wanted to interject. Yeah, man. So, so like, I was like, well, okay, can I come train here? Like, I don't know, man. I'm an idiot, dude. I don't know. Like, I don't know if they, how that works. Like, uh, nah, dude. You can't just come in here whenever you want. I was like, oh, all right. He's like, yeah, but just don't fight anymore. So, I, so I stopped kind of, like, really fighting and training. I mean, I still train it because I like to do it. And then I got the call about two months later, I think around my birthday or on my birthday in July. And they're like, Hey, uh, we're going to, we're going to sign you. You start in October. <laughs> so I was sitting in my car when I got the call and I was like, Oh crap. So I, I recognized the number, the two or three number from uh, Connecticut. And I was mm -hmm. like, all right, okay. Mm -hmm. all right, you can do this dude. And I was like, I was just sweating. I'm like, all right, you got, I was on my way to the gym. I like take my pre-workout already. And I was just like, Oh my God. And I was just like freaking out. Like I called my mom and, and, and it, was, it was cool, man. It was such an awesome feeling. And and uh, I think that's, like, really cool to kind of experience stuff like that. You never really think that's going to happen to you. Uh, it's kind of like winning the lottery. Yeah. Right. When, when you're talking about how hard the trout is, I think one of the most famous um, examples of that was Brock Lesnar's uh, stint on Tough Enough where there's a video and some images where – where they make them run the ropes like over and over and over and over again. And when he lifts his arm, it's just blood <laughs> down the side. Yeah. Yeah. Bro, it's like, I had never hit the ropes before. Like, of course. So I'm like, I hit the first time. I'm like, oh my God, what is this? I, well, I was, I was bruised. And I, bruised. I was like, oh, yeah. It was mm -hmm. terrible. The, the, they don't warn you about that. Like, yeah, I, I wasn't hitting them right or something. I had like a little, like a, not a rash, that's the wrong word, but kind of like uh, like the skin had well, rubbed off from like right above my butt. And I was like, what the hell is this? Like, I don't, this hurts, man. Like, sit, punch me in the face all day, but don't make me run ropes a hundred times. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Tim, uh, Tim actually uh, trained for a few months. Yeah. Well, and you yeah. stopped, why'd you stop? Um, <clears throat> I'm not much of a traveler, and the paying of dues was quite hard. Like, the first show that I worked, like, we took everything down from the gym, the gym, uh, the, the training facility, loaded it up, put it up, took it down, loaded it, fucking all this other shit. And it was just like, oh, and then you train at 6 a.m. tomorrow. Oh, okay. And then some dude has his hands on my crotch and is just, just slamming me for two hours and I, it was like like that's okay like i love wrestling i i want to do this what we're doing right now for the rest of my life i want it to be my job but that i did not want to be my job and i respect any wrestler at any level that can do that because it's just what i i couldn't i couldn't do it yeah, man. I mean, it's definitely not for everyone, right? Like, uh, some people don't like strawberry ice cream, and some people only like chocolate. You know, it's 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 different for everyone. But I can tell you that at NXT, uh, again, from my from my experience, I know what it is now. Uh, we would set up the ring, the auditorium, before every show, and then we still got training the next day. So it's it's, it's at that level too. Maybe right. Not as, but pretty early, not as sticks though. <laughs> so yeah. And I understand that. It's just like kind of everything. And like when you were talking about the uh, the introduction and the um, the cardio, I remember my uh, my tryout. I I don't know how many Hindu squats I did. I, I had to uh, I did wheelbarrow push ups around the entire ring, uh, bumps and and rolls, and then the two trainers. Uh, Justin Idol and Super Hentai um, from IWC were talking to me in the middle of the ring. <laughs> and I was just like, Bleh. and they're like, dude, he's going to throw up. 
<laughs> I was like, uh, am I? And they were like, yes, you're going to throw up. Go outside. Then I was just like dry haven and shit. But, uh, yeah, then I got the call that I was accepted and everything. But, yeah. Was... My my her. buddy now, my, my close friend now, uh, he goes by the name of Bulk Nasty. He's uh, he's making waves uh, on in the uh, upper northeast and such like that. He he's had a lot of uh, matches with Wardlow because Wardlow uh, came from our home promotion. Um, so did Britt Baker and Elias and uh, Joaquin Wild or Shima Zion or DJ Z. However you know him, uh, yeah. but yeah. Shane Taylor actually came up through IWC as well. I I knew I I met Shane. I ate a meal with Shane Taylor when Shane Taylor was massive. Like, yeah. I don't know if you've ever seen him before, but he was huge, man. And when I saw him on Twitter, and I saw the name. I was like, this can't be the same guy. This can't be the same dude. And it was. We we interviewed him too. He's he's a cool cool, cool dude. Yeah, Shane T, Shane T's the man. Dude. I play Call of Duty with Shane all the time. I love it. <laughs> that makes sense. I love that. Does he does he does he uh, bark like DMX at you when he's whooping your ass? No, we're on a team, man. We're on a team. <laughs> really good. I mean, you know, sometimes. I'll- like well, <laughs> like we have like a lot of like kind of jokes, like the kind of squad we play with this stuff. So like I'll comment on his Instagram or something. I like to say the same shit. Like I love, Uh-oh. oh, like you can't do anything on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> Dan is great, dude. He's been, he's been, you know, he's got like that really rough past, and and it's kind of cool to hear him talk about it and learn about it. And uh, you know, as, as rough and tough as Shane is, he's. He's been a really, a really great friend to me, uh, regardless of our on-screen stuff, and and uh, he's he's been a really great shoulder to kind of lean on it and, and bounce ideas off of. Dude is so smart. He is so smart, and uh, and and just my experiences like watching everything and reading comments and stuff, and he's a very underappreciated talent. He really is. Uh, I agree. I, yeah, we had like a we had like kind of like a small program a couple years back. We had like six or seven matches and. It was like it was just for me, you know. I, I look at Ring of Honor. All these guys are wrestling for so long, and they're so talented. And and I'm just like, man, I don't belong in the ring with these dudes. Like, I'm like, man, I'm still so new and so inexperienced. But uh, you know, Shane did like a really good job with helping me kind of like break that 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 mold. And 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 you know, he always like was. It's, it's just been great, man. And and I think that's like a lot of thing that uh, the younger guys need growing up, where the older guys are kind of like, hey, but you're gonna be all right. It's gonna be okay. And and uh, our locker room has been great for that. And I mean, I have, I have stories from so many dudes just kind of like helping me and just guiding me to, to being where I'm at right now. That's great. So, um, expanding on that a little bit, what's uh, what's some of your favorite matches you've had in Ring of Honor so far, or what are you looking forward to? So, my first ever favorite match was uh, was against Mark Briscoe in Oregon. That was oh, oh Mark hits so hard. <laughs> I'm like, man, why are you mad at me, dude? <laughs> That's not redneck kung fu, man. <laughs> yeah, man. Like, like you know, and all jokes aside, you know, uh, you, know, you, know, you guys talk about oh, some people are so stiff or snug and blah blah blah. But like, yo, know, man, like you know what we're we're getting into, right? And and Mark just Mark is just, dude is on another level. Like the Briscoes, man. I've watched all. Like, I've seen a lot of their stuff, uh, and they're always, they're always so good, <laughs> so good. And and just being in the room with Mark, you know, there's like there's there's that kind of nervous thing, right? It's like when you meet like your your dream, uh, like your idol or something like that. You know, you're like, and then then you get to like kind of work with them, and they're like, yo, man, like let's put this put on a great show. And and those guys are they, those guys they have like all the right in the world to be, um, you know, arrogant or cocky, but dude, they're they're incredible. They're I know I feel like such a fanboy, but I mean, like a lot of people like just really don't know that side, and, and it, it's kind of a shame. But like, you know, I get it. I get like the the curtain has to remain closed at some point. But man, like Mark, Mark's pushed to another level, and I think like that kind of started the escalation to what led to Thylus and then Ill Cats, and then uh, 
<laughs> and, then, and then what led to where I'm at, man, like that was like my first real favorite match. And then every anytime I wrestle Gresham, that's regardless of of what the program is, what um, what what we do, it's phenomenal. Gresham is I feel like I'm saying the same thing about everybody, but they're just they're all up here and it's just like I'm trying to get there and I know I know it's happening and I got trust in the process, but God, Gresham is a genius. Him, him, and Lethal, the way they just think, and uh, it's just mind blowing. Of course, anything with Gresham, I love. And then yeah. that last match with Jay was like my 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 favorite um, overalls. And uh, there's still gonna be so much more coming from me, so I'm sure I'll have a new favorite sometime. Looking forward soon. to it. I'm not, I'm not upset. Very much so. Very. Much I, so. And I I I I think when you're saying like. I'm saying the same thing about everybody. They're all so good. I think that's just mostly a testament to the effort that Ring of Honor puts into hiring uh, the people that they hire and the research that they do on people and yourself included. Like, you're really good, even if you don't think that you're at this level or whatever. Like, yeah, you're, you're super, super humble. You're man. very humble. <laughs> I mean, I haven't done anything to, to, to warrant cockiness, man, you know? So uh, I just think if everyone kind of strives to always improve, there's really, I don't know, man, what have I ever done, right? Like, <laughs> man, I'd be a little. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Jay, if you're watching this, I'm so sorry. You know? uh, yeah, man, I, I want to get to that point where, where people can, like, you know, where you guys are in, you know, five years or everything, someone, and they're like, man, like, I, I just want to be like Josh Woods or whatever. Like, I, I want that. That's what I want. And then, like, I hope, like, you know, if I can just make, you know, a difference to someone, uh, a young guy coming up or something, and they think the same, like, that's worth it to me. I coached a lot of kids in, like, high school and college, and I worked, I love working with, like, the youth programs and stuff. So, um, like, that is huge giving back. And I, like, my co my high school coaches and my college coaches were probably, like, very uh, detrimental to my growth just as a person. And, and that changed your life, man. I, I've been, you know, I'm not a big, like, sob story kind of person. I don't like to kind of dump my stuff out there. But I've been, like, in a lot of dark spots, and I've had, like, coaches that have really just kind of just, like, saved my life almost. And and uh, that makes the whole world a difference, man. It just takes one person. You know, nobody does this by themselves. Amen. Absolutely. Amen. And you know what? That's a great way to end this. <laughs> Josh, you have been fantastic. Thank you so much for uh, – allowing us to interview you good luck at final battle you don't really need it i can't wait to see you holding that tv title thanks man you guys are awesome i really appreciate you guys having me thank you very much thank you